Hey, how's it going, YouTube? This is Matty Ice of the Stone Family, bringing you into Lonely Hermit's channel today. We are doing this because it is time for the postseason interview with the coach of the LA Inferno. That is Lonely Hermit himself. How are you doing today, sir? I uh, doing pretty good. Uh, went and picked up some shirts I ordered, so <laughs> I'm pretty happy with that. Um, but yeah, so far so good today. Uh, how you doing? I am doing well. And if you don't mind me doing this real quick, because right before we hopped into our voice chat here to record this, as of the day we recorded this, congratulations to Inferno Men, who literally just got a shiny <laughs> yeah. right before we uh, click record. Yeah. And congratulations <laughs> on that shiny tart twig. So whenever you see this, you'll know that this is what we were recording. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right before your... Or right as you got the shiny mm -hmm. but um <laughs> if you were ready we can hop right into this let's do it and i can start asking you some questions yes. Yes, yes with with this season done and wrapped up was the ebl more or less what you expected it to be i mean having been weirdly the i guess seventh member from last season <laughs> um kind of having that sort of shadow membership there um I, I pretty much knew what I was going to be getting into. Um, I kind of wish I would have thought about it a little bit more when it came to time, time you know, constraints and stuff. But uh, but yeah, more or less, I'd say I say I knew what I was coming into. Obviously, I, I used to do competitive. This was like years ago, um, but stop that. But I, I, I kind of had an idea and then watching you guys and, you know, talking to like Derek behind the scenes and all that or you behind the scenes of what you guys would do and all that good stuff. Um, I pretty much, I, I pretty much had a very, a very good idea of what uh, I was getting into. It's just I wasn't ready for all the stress of <laughs> being in battle. <laughs> yeah, I think the other thing I've heard guys mention that they weren't expecting was how much time actually goes into yeah. building the team and then preparing for each week's match. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would say that EV training wasn't terrible or anything like that. It's mostly preparation in terms of like studying their team and studying your team like that's that's where the time goes into and it's 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 grueling <laughs> yeah definitely and uh did you um did something surprise you or did you know exactly what you signed up for did you have any big surprise that hit you in the face <laughs> losing the first two matches in a row <laughs> that definitely i mean i wasn't expecting to go like undefeated or anything i was i came into the season with pretty tempered expectations like uh, i wasn't i wasn't like really super down on myself and i think we're going to talk about some things like that later but uh um that was a smack in the face a nice little reality check like hey you're not gonna win every single game and I, I didn't expect to but that was definitely reality reality check right off the rip um but i mean other than that like i said i, I kind of was sort of the seventh default member from last season being able to get in close with a lot of the teams and stuff and watching and seeing the behind the scenes and all that so uh i'd say i was pretty prepared for this season i don't think aside from that i don't think anything really uh threw me off guard to be honest Hey, luckily for both of us, we started 0-2, we finished 3-2, so yeah. we did something right. Yeah. <laughs> would, you, um, would you have approached anything uh, differently this season, uh, for example, like maybe the way you drafted or general approaches to the matches, like team building and stuff? Uh, practice battles. Practice battles, practice battles, practice battles. It wasn't until annoyingly it wasn't until i was gonna face derek in the playoffs when i finally started doing practice battles um oh, bad time. Bad yeah time. <laughs> yeah and and i would have beat him well I, we'll talk about that later too but i would have beat him but <laughs> that that's uh that uh was about the time i started doing practice battles uh, i kind of wish i did them throughout the whole season because it, it gave me a, a just an insane understanding of my team um especially heading towards the end of the season when i was studying my team more i was really starting to understand it and getting better um but yeah i would say practice battles was something i, I would love to have done more i guess um maybe even if it was just like five before a match or something like that because then i could really uh know what to expect and know how to utilize my team better um in terms of how i drafted i think i was pretty i, I was honestly pretty happy with my draft i wasn't uh wasn't really too upset with it, but yeah, that uh, I'd say the main thing was uh, practice battles. Definitely was something I wish I could have done more. Uh, I should have act. It was more, more, more mostly me. Like I should have actively went out of my way to do it, but uh, I just didn't, <laughs> and I wish I would have done more. 
I, I do find it funny that uh, the two guys that drafted the Sand teams both started 0-2. <laughs> both went 3-2 again. And I don't know that we actually stole a Pokemon from each other. Uh, I know both of us were looking at each other's teams. Yeah. But I, I think we both ended up with decent Sand teams overall. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I, I like the way we both drafted. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I know you didn't win at all, so this next question could be a little bit of a dumb question, but I'm going to ask it anyways. Were you more or less satisfied with how your season went? Yeah, yeah. Did I did I like the ending? No, um, but I think something. It's it's actually something. I, I thought about this after we did your interview yesterday. Uh, Cause you had mentioned how Derek and Guanaco are very methodical with their with their picks. They're not super slow. They're not super fast. They just they know what they want to do and they do it. Um, and I think this season, I, if if I had been Derek, I, w- I think I would have absolutely proven, like definitively, that I can be up there with those two guys. Um, and I think that's what really helped helped me get over that last loss was that uh, I. I feel very confident that if I were to ever come back, I could very much be, and that's not trying to toot my own horn or anything, but I think I could very much be up there with them, like on their level, uh, if I just don't make those stupid mistakes and I trust myself. Cause that was the hard part with this season was I kind of didn't trust myself at first. I was struggling um, to trust my own decision-making and my gut when, and then when I actually started trusting my gut, I started winning matches and I kept winning and I kept winning and it, felt it helped me get my confidence up and up and up because i was just uh starting to play more like them and more just trusting myself and my team and uh uh, yeah i'd say i was pretty satisfied with how the season went again not necessarily the ending but more so what i learned from it uh and proving to myself that i actually could be on the level with the top dogs well like i said yesterday in my interview uh and yeah, we, we interview each other, guys. <laughs> but it, like, like I said yesterday, everyone's got to believe they're one of the best battlers yeah. in the league. Yeah. If you're not, you're, you're not in this for the right, you know, for, you can be in it for just the fun, but you still got to believe you're one of the best, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. So, um, do you feel like you lived up to any of the goals that you set for yourself before the season kicked off? So I was actually thinking about this question when I was writing it <laughs> and uh, I was trying to remember my goals and I th- believe in my preseason interview I said my short term was to win week one, my medium term was to make the playoffs and my long term was to make the finals. So obviously I only got one of those. Um, week one was not pretty. <laughs> so that goal unfortunately couldn't reach that. I did reach the playoffs, which in third place too, which wasn't, you know, terrible. Um, so we made the playoffs. Our medium term goal was good. The long term goal, I, I could have done it. I really could have, but uh, I choked at the end there. Um, so I, but still, even then, I got a sweep in the playoffs, made it to the semifinals, top four out of everyone in the league. I mean, I I can't really be too upset with that. You know, that was, that was, uh, I, I'd say, despite not filling the goals I said, I still did more than I probably expected myself to do. So, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say I'd say I'd, I fulfilled them, honestly. Yeah, but and you won a playoff match, which a lot of people, even the guys that are, the other guys that have dropped out, the, mm-hmm. some of the guys that are still in the league coming back for season three, a lot of people can't say they won a playoff match, you know. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so definitely that that's a feather in your cap. So winning that playoff match, you should be very proud of yourself for that one. Thanks. <laughs> All right, so if there was any change you, uh, if you could make any change to your team, would you have? So I was thinking about this one too. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I thought about this whole interview yesterday because I was just like, I need to kind of have it a little bit in my head because I'm very all over the place. Um, so this was an interesting question for me because I'm not gonna lie, I was, I'm, I'm like, I look at my team and I'm, I'm pretty happy with how I drafted. Um, you did take Excadrill for me, so it was funny that you said that earlier because Excadrill was the only Pokemon that I was looking at that I couldn't get because you got it first. Um, so, <laughs> but that did end up changing my game plan because I, what I did is I moved Rotom Heat higher. Uh, I noticed Dracovish was still on the table, uh, and I knew it had Sand Rush, so I wanted that. So I managed to snag that, uh, and then somehow, somehow, I still don't really know how this happened. Corviknight fell all the way to round six. So I said, yes, I'm picking that up because I, I was well, my thought process was I wanted I wanted a steel flying type, but I was like, there's no way Corviknight gets drafted, you know, doesn't get drafted in like the first three or four rounds. Um, so I was expecting to take Skarmory. 
uh and then somehow Corviknight fell all the way down right into my lap i had to take it um the two things i think i would change swampert i think i would probably take a different water type to be honest gastron was my number one but that got taken around three i think or some yeah around three um but i probably just would have gone a different water type to be honest maybe something with water absorb or something like that um and then mammoth swine and leafeon i would flip them and instead of taking leafeon as much as as good as it was this season i wish i would have beat guanaco to rillaboom because it was my first pick and leafeon was my second so i wish i would have taken rillaboom round eight and then mammoth swine round nine because i don't think anyone was going to take mammoth swine to be honest um so i wish i would have flipped those two i, I wish i would have taken rillaboom first and then taking Mammoth Swine later because I think it would have benefited the team like a lot more. Leafeon was great, but Rillaboom could have been better, which is awesome. I mean, we saw it this season. Obviously, it was it was fantastic for Miami. So uh, those are the couple things I would change. Change a different uh, water type for Swampert and switch Leafeon and Mammoth Swine to take Rillaboom instead of uh, Leafeon. Yeah, I was going to say Lapras would have been a good water absorb or mm. um, Kingdra could have been really good water dragon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, I think it was funny that you mentioned the Excadrill and the Rillaboom uh, because both of them turned out to be really well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so okay. if you could have got that team, I think maybe you'd you'd have been a little bit better off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right. So we're the team that you did end up taking. Though, oh. were you able to adjust to that team quickly, or did it take you time to understand before you? Uh, to understand your team before it finally got clicking uh well i think we we, we kind of touched on that earlier i mean it took a second uh obviously i lost the first two matches um ace losing to ace was kind of a, a eye-opener like he he told me a couple things so to anyone who was victim of the corver night blame ace because he's the one that gave me that setup um and and that's when I started to figure out my team more because then I, I figured out Quirver Knight, but then I started unlocking everyone else. I started kind of figuring out how to play around Hippowdon on the sand, started working around bringing in Leafeon regularly into the matches, bringing in Dracovish kind of. Uh, Dracovish didn't do a ton this season, I won't lie. I probably could have utilized it better, but it was a threat nonetheless. And that's what I also started to learn was that some of my Pokemon are threats and people will see them as threats. So I need to play around that um, because I can use that to my advantage essentially. Like I can like Corviknight, I know everybody was expecting Corviknight towards the tail end of the season. So I had to play around that because I knew they would have stuff ready for it. Um so I would bring other things to try and prep for it. Like for example, Foos actually had on his Groudon uh he had a ground type move i believe and he also had a th uh, an electric type move for corvinate which meant when i sent in my landers to start he couldn't touch landers um so that was perfect prediction uh and landers obviously was able to sweep in that match um so it, it took me a second but i would say probably i'd say probably after facing jack is when i really like got got going with my team because i think i had brought everyone by that point and i started to have my regular six um, and I got really comfortable with them. So I'd say probably after Jack is when I started to uh, really start to understand my team. And it wasn't so challenging to try and prep for matches anymore. Yeah, and the one good thing about that Landris sweep is you're officially the only person with a sweep in the playoffs. We did have Ooh. three sweeps this season. <laughs> but both of the other two happened in week four and then mm -hmm. week five. Yeah. So you do get to hold yes. that over everyone. First, <laughs> first sweep in the playoffs, and as of right now, the only sweep in the playoffs. Yes. <laughs> so uh, were, were there any sort of challenges you struggled with throughout the season? And if there were, were you able to sort them out? Well, I'd say first and foremost was time um and no <laughs> uh time was the number one issue and i couldn't quite work around that enough um which is why i'm taking this break from the ebl just to try and figure out how i can work it um if i can work it hopefully um uh, but yeah that's time was definitely number one uh like i said just general preparations weren't up to where they could have been um and also just the sort of mentality challenge like i mentioned earlier just sort of a confidence thing um that was something that I slowly broke out of as the season went on um, and just kind of got a little more confident, a little more confident, a little more confident in myself uh, that. So I would say time, preparation and just my own confidence in myself were some of the biggest challenges. I'd say the confidence thing definitely sorted that out and preparation got better as as the season went on. Uh, but time, time, you know, time's a killer. It, <laughs> it bit me this season. So, yeah, there's that. Oh. 
sorry i just thought about something so one of the goals i actually had uh, sorry i know i'm going back like five questions but there was a <laughs> there was a goal in my head it just popped in my head right now there was a goal i had and it was to beat jack derrick and landon all three of them <laughs> that whether it was in regular season or playoffs it was to beat all three of them at least once and i did it so that was sorry that, that popped into my head i had to bring it up because that was one of my like secret goals and i wanted to beat all three of them and i did um so sorry but yeah yeah anyway challenges um time uh confidence and preparations that's a, that's the same challenges for me i gotta figure mm. those out and i'm in my third <laughs> season coming up so <laughs> so one thing I, I have thought about and just to give you a heads up if you come back on the time thing mm. maybe maybe set out one specific day during the week to only focus mm. on the bl battles you know just one specific day for me next season it's going to be thursdays mm -hmm. just focus on your next match for that thursday you know and then try not to think about it the rest of the week it's a pretty good idea i like that that's a, mm. yeah that's my idea for next season anyway so we'll mm. see how that goes <laughs> <laughs> Were there were there any issues that you expected to run into this season but they never really became a problem uh weirdly enough your interview and Fuse's interview, you guys had the same answer as me, water types. Uh, water types <laughs> were a huge threat to my team. I was terrified of Derek's Primarina. Um, and yeah, water types in general just scared me <laughs> this whole season. But aside from, I think, week one, Gastrodon, but because I, I didn't play that match well enough, um, nearly well enough as I could have, um, Gastrodon was really the only water type this season, I'd say, that like really threatened my team. Uh, but also ice types that one though that one's a little mm, debatable some ice types did really well uh vanilla X obviously killed my landers um uh, when i was trying to trying to take down landon um so ice types and water types issues at certain points but not nearly as much as i thought they'd be like nobody really came at me with ice and water types um like i expected so I'd say I'd say definitely ice and water types. Did I, I, those were I definitely expected those. I expected something every week, like someone to have a random water type move, a random ice type move. But it never really, it never really became a, a consistent problem, to be honest. Right. Yeah, I feel that 100%. Everyone's gonna be like, oh, this is gonna hurt me, and then all of a sudden, it, no, it never appears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was there was there anything during the season that you found easier? Unexpected or something that may have just came easy to you? Uh, I think understanding the sand. I've never really used the weather team, so understanding the sand and working around it um, was definitely up there. But but just understanding my team, weirdly enough, it, 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 though it came later in the season, it, it kind of just hit me. It's like a like that light bulb beside upside your head. You know, it's just like. It just clicked and so that that was kind of not necessarily i guess maybe not easy but uh when it came to me it, it just kind of flowed um so there's definitely that uh battling i think handling the uh pressure of battling and the nerves kind of came easier than i expected i expected to be super nervous throughout the, my, like my entire match uh, every single match i'd have but honestly the nerves would nerves would go out the nerves would kind of go away and uh i'd feel a lot better as the match went on um even if i was losing and also i mean i've always been pretty good at this like when i used to play soccer and stuff i've always been pretty good about taking losses so uh that definitely uh i never really was down on myself except for the loss against derek but even then i, I got over it, you know what i mean I, I joke about it all the time because it was a really stupid mistake but um i'd say taking losses as well that that really it never really bothered me um losing to ace losing to foos it didn't really bother me as much uh as people might expect because of how i lost those matches but um yeah i'd say those are the things that came easier to me yeah the nerves thing i think uh once you get into the match and you you click the first couple of moves mm -hmm. you're, you're in the flow at yeah, that point yeah. you know and, and the nerves kind of go away and you're just focused on the battle at that point mm -hmm. And then for the other thing you mentioned, you know, understanding your team and turning the season around, that is officially called the Matty Ice Effect. Because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've done it twice, you know. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right, so you made the playoffs. Mm. Uh, obviously, did pretty well in the playoffs, in my opinion, anyways. 
Uh, as you're heading into the playoffs, you had a three-game winning streak mm-hmm. going into that first match of the playoffs. What were your thoughts heading into the playoffs? Honestly, coming after, off after your last game. Uh, coming well, yeah, coming off that game uh, against Landon, I felt really good because that was the first match I had that I won that didn't go to timer, and I feel like I played really well in that match. Um, and like I said, that at that point, when I really I got my my six, my six were Lander, Sipaladon, Rodenby, uh, Dracovich, Corvinet, and Leafon. Those are my six. I ran with them, even if they might not have been the best for the team I was facing. I just ran with them because I wanted, uh, I just that I don't know, just the six I was comfortable with. So I was feeling more comfortable than ever throughout the whole season, coming off of a, a, an amazing game. I'd say I. I might be biased, but I'd say like top five in the EBL, just saying. Uh, <laughs> um, one of the best games like I've had the pleasure of being a part of. Um, and so I was feeling really good. I was feeling really confident. And then I didn't really have time to prep against Foos. I had about half an hour of the day of, and I kind of just settled on, say, I, I just said, screw it. I'm going to I'm gonna just swords dance and hope for the best. Let's see if it works. Uh, Cause my strategy going into that was just try to do as much as much damage as possible with landers and then come in with the rest of my Pokemon to just kind of sweep up whatever's left. Um, so the hope was landers could handle like at least half his team. Uh, obviously that plan very much worked more than I expected. Um, to be fair though, Foos didn't have obviously a ton of prep that week either. So, I, you know, I always got to bring that up too. Um, but yeah, I felt really confident and then I just kind of said screw it. You know, we're in the playoffs This was one of my goals. I said if we you know, don't continue It, it will suck, but I'll have more time <laughs> uh, But if I do continue awesome, you know, I get to face Derek. Yay um, So I just kind of said screw it I'm going all out and obviously it paid off at least for that first round Well, the one good thing the one good thing about our season is, yeah, it's time consuming, but we're only eight weeks long. Yep. So, it, you know, mm-hmm. eight matches, and it, if anyone can actually figure out the time preparation, because talking to even our champion, two top champion, mm-hmm. he can't figure out the time constraints. <laughs> yeah. Yet, you know, so even with him, it's still an issue. So, mm-hmm. once someone figures it out, guys, let us know. The <laughs> yeah. <secret>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so you took on Derek in the yeah. uh, semifinals, or as you <laughs> like to call them, the uh, the division finals. <laughs> um, what were your immediate thoughts? Uh, <laughs> it, it was just like, well, my immediate thought was, I want to rematch you, <laughs> and Derek graciously agreed. Uh, he had extra time, so we rematched. We made very similar plays um, to try and keep it as consistent as possible and ended up walking away with the win in our little match we had. I wish I would have recorded it just to have it. You know what I mean? Not not to count it, but just yeah. to have it. But uh, post it as like the hidden. Yeah, the, hidden the lost match. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so it's it sucked, but beating him in that rematch made me feel a lot better because I, I that's that's what really solidified that confidence in my head. Like I could be up there with these two guys that are have been the favorites that the whole, I mean even before the season started they were the favorites um so that pretty much solidified like my confidence in myself of I, I can hang with I can hang with the big dogs um if I don't make mistakes and um I, it sucked it hurt <laughs> it hurt it sucked making that stupid stupid mistake of bringing the wrong Rotom but um it it weirdly upped my confidence in the in my battling skills um so i couldn't and i lost to derek you know i couldn't be too mad i love derek so um i just wish he would have won it all i, just, I don't want to <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's my thing i always want to lose to the person yeah. who wins the championship you, you so don't want to lose like, to the loser lost to the exactly <laughs> <laughs> uh so yeah i, I was just disappointed but yeah, at the same time i kind of got this confidence in myself after a rematch and thanks derek for wanting for you know doing the rematch with me um to try and ease my mind a little bit uh because it worked all right so so the whole season two uh went obviously the way it went for you 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 ended up being uh basically what third or fourth depending on how you want to call it Hmm. uh what were your 
thoughts about the EBL as a whole this season, though, including everyone else's teams and matches and how it all went? Incredible. <laughs> Every week had something, something new. I mean, obviously, we've talked about it. Records broken, new things, uh, new things set. The first scoreless match, the first sweep. I mean, the most timer matches. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> you're uh, welcome. <laughs> um, and you know what? You guys can look at me as a controversial person, but there was no rules against it. Now there is, but there were no rules against it. I just used the game. Uh, I abused yeah. it. <laughs> so yeah, uh, no, I was I was in support of it the whole season. Like, look, guys, there's no rule against mm. it. Let them use the timer. Like, get mad. I don't yeah. care. Mm. I'm not punishing someone for something we don't have a rule for. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and obviously, there there's gonna be rules this next season. Um, but uh you guys can look at me as controversial i don't care it's funny i found it really funny that you the three examples you used for, at first stalling two of them were me <laughs> um, yeah, well, yeah we, we've got three examples uh two for you yeah. and one for first yeah so, uh you are you're a polarizing uh, character to say came least. in the league and changed it up <laughs> <laughs> but yeah this season was incredible every week had just something i mean there was just it was just amazing match after amazing match topped off with one of the best matches the ebl has seen uh possibly the the best match the ebl has seen um a match that was worthy of the final sorry matt <laughs> but no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that was an incredible match and that was like the perfect way to top it off yeah so watching this season uh because of the weekly roundups so having like to watch it from the sort of more analytical standpoint was awesome uh and it was just a, a an amazing season to witness honestly all he had to do was click baby doll eyes right? yeah all he had to do <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Lonely wrote these questions, but he doesn't know this next one's coming because uh -huh. uh, the next one is actually asking about next season uh, being a part of it. I'm going to switch that question up a little bit since you are not going to be part okay. of the next season. Okay. Okay. Are you looking forward as a viewer for watching the next season of the Elite Battle League? Yeah. Uh, obviously, the I think the biggest storyline is Gunako going for the three-peat. Um, he's not getting it. He's not getting it. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's obviously the three-peat, right? Th like, he's, he's that's the biggest storyline. He's on a, what, four-game winning streak right now, two or five, something like that. So yeah, he so can carry that into next season and make it even longer. Who knows? Have the longest win streak in the EBL. Um, so those are a couple storylines that I, w I definitely want to keep an eye out for. And obviously all the new guys. Uh, I don't know how many of them have said they're going to be leaks. So I'm not going to say their names. I'm not going to say who they are. But uh, there's quite a few new guys coming into the league as well. Uh, Ace is coming back. So hopefully he can stick around the whole season um, and actually show us what he could have done. Although Tara is also the, like, the other coach i do also want to keep an eye out for because she didn't have her uh, a team she drafted and she still made the semifinals. which uh if she has a, a proper team that she wants that's that's dangerous obviously i'm and i'm telling you right now uh i all i did was sit there as she told me pokemon to write down mm -hmm. her team's looking power <laughs> And I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. So, yeah, next season, I'm excited to be a, as a viewer next season to just watch it. Uh, obviously, I think I think we all know Derek. Derek's my baby boy. Uh, the bias is still there, <laughs> but uh, I still want to see everyone do well. Uh, yeah. I still want to see just I just want to see a competitive season. I always say this when it comes to sports and stuff. I love my teams, but I want to see a competitive game um and i love those heated competitive games i love when seasons go down to the wire and things like that so yeah. i really want to see just uh, another amazing season i was just i want to see upsets on upsets that's what i want to see i want to see a bunch of upsets <laughs> so yeah well, I, i'm excited <laughs> hopefully hopefully i'm not considered uh one of the top dogs anymore so hopefully i can be the upset mm -hmm. before okay <laughs> <laughs> All right, so for your team, your personal team, if you could rate your season one out of ten, what would you give yourself this season? Uh, I, you know what? I'd say a nine. I'd say a nine. Uh, there you go. it only would have been a ten if I won. <laughs> if it, actually, you know what? It probably would have been a ten if I made the final. To be honest with you, I probably would have given myself an eleven if I made the, if I won it all. <laughs> um, but I'd say a nine. I'd say, like I said, I. I you know showed myself that I, I can hang with the top dogs if i really wanted to uh and who knows if i come back next season if i had come back for season three um 
who knows maybe i could have pushed for the top as well just like them um because i could have gotten a, a a done more research and got a different team um so yeah that i'd say a nine um because i just proved to myself and maybe to other people i don't know if you guys think the same but uh that i could hang with 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 you know the biggest favorites in the league um and yeah so definitely nine like i said it probably would have been a 10 if i wanted it all but you know it is what it is so we'll go with a nine out of ten i like it i like it nine out of ten there you go all right so with all that out of the way is there anything that you have going on personally that you would like to plug right here uh we have our brilliant diamond shining pearl three versus with always more videos and jack Nition on the channel uh it's wednesdays on my channel thursdays on always my videos fridays on jack Nition. Uh, we also have our radical red foray versus with crobat sir Genji, and foos uh that's tuesdays on crobats wednesdays on sir Genji, thursday on foos's channel fridays on my channel uh, we also have been streaming more lately. We've been doing some shiny hunting and stuff, so come hang out. Uh, also, we have our Christmas merch, uh, only for December, only for Christmas. Uh, that is down below as well. All those good links, uh, and obviously Twitter, Instagram, both at Hermitlonely underscore, uh, and all that good stuff. So I think, yeah, that's about everything. <laughs> and I would like to say congratulations on your three shinies yesterday. <laughs> Thanks. What, the heck? what kind of stream was that? <laughs> that felt really good. <laughs> but um. Guys, just to give you a heads up, as he said earlier, he's not going to be in the league next season as a competitor, nor is he going to be in the uh, weekly roundups, but he will always be, regardless of what bring, happens in the future, you will always be in the heart of every EBL coach, and we're going to miss you as a competitor, we're going to miss you as the host of the uh, weekly roundups, and... We look forward to having you back one day. I don't believe the LA Inferno are gone forever. That's my personal opinion. He has not said anything, guys. But <laughs> I can't wait for the day that you do make your return, if that is ever possible. Well, thank you for the kind words, dude. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> but that is going to be it, guys, for the postseason interview with Lonely Hermit and the LA Inferno. Uh, it says best of luck to you in season three. Best of uh, luck to you <laughs> and everything you have going on during season three. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you have a fantastic day. I hope you viewers have a fantastic day. We will see you on February 5th for the start of the yes. season three Elite Battle League. As we said, it will not be on this channel at all, but you can catch all the coaches uh at that time february yes. 5th hope you all have a great day and until next time guys later